Thank you, darling. Kate, you're not wearing a bustle. In the heart of the Wild West, where legends were born and outlaws roamed, there existed a realm of untamed wilderness and lawlessness like no other. From outrageous shootouts at high noon to the mysterious cases of the disappearing towns, these tales have remained hidden in the annals of time, but that's about to change. Join us as we'll be embarking on a journey through the pages of history and unearthing 20 of the most bizarre and unusual things that took place in the Wild West. Number 20. Ghostly Gambles In the heart of the Wild West town stood a famous saloon known for rowdy parties and high-stakes poker games that attracted gamblers from everywhere. There were tales of intense games, big bets, and crafty bluffs that swirled among the locals, adding an air of mystery. But what set this place apart was the spooky rumor that the building was haunted by the spirits of card players who had lost here. The main character in this story was Jonathan Jackpot McKenna, a famous poker player known for taking huge risks. One night, a high-stakes poker game took place in the saloon with gold coins, property deeds, and even horses at stake. As the night went on, tension grew, and bets got crazier. Cheers filled the room when Jackpot won, but a shadow seemed to fall over everything. People started whispering that his victory might not be so great. Jackpot couldn't sleep, and he began to hear voices that sounded like the defeated gamblers, Terrified, he talked to the town's oldest residents, who confirmed the saloon's dark reputation. They believed that the spirits of losers were trapped inside, looking for redemption through a win. Desperation led Jackpot to make a bold decision. He challenged the spirits to a final poker game to decide who really owned the saloon. The room felt strange as the game started. Ghostly card players appeared across the table, focused on the cards. When the last hand was shown, the room went silent. Then, with a ghostly sigh, the defeated spirits slowly disappeared. Jackpot won the saloon, but it came at a high cost. Number 19, Big Nose George Parrot. The outlaw known as Big Nose George Parrot emerges as a distinctive figure, transcending mere criminality to embark on a peculiar posthumous journey. His notoriety doesn't solely arise from his criminal exploits, but also from the eerie path he took after his death, evolving from an outlaw into a peculiar exhibit of the era's fascination with the macabre. Big Nose George earned his moniker due to his unusually prominent nose, which became symbolic of his identity. However, it was his audacious criminal activities, including train robberies, that cemented his reputation as a formidable outlaw. His life took a dark turn in 1881 when he was captured and subsequently lynched by an angry mob, sealing his grim legacy. However, the legend of Big Nose George didn't conclude with his demise. Instead of a conventional burial, his body embarked on a morbid journey into the realm of medical curiosity. His remains were handed over to doctors who performed an autopsy, subsequently creating a death mask and flaying a portion of his skin. Shockingly, this skin was transformed into a pair of shoes and a medical bag. These macabre artifacts, particularly the skin-crafted shoes, were displayed in various locations, including a hotel and later a museum in Rawlins, Wyoming. Number 18. The Ruthless Legacy of Judge Parker Appointed in 1875 to establish order in the wild western frontier, Judge Parker earned his formidable nickname through his steadfast commitment to upholding the law. His courtroom, a stage for unwavering judgments, mirrored his resolute determination. Over an extensive jurisdiction spanning 74,000 square miles, Parker's authority brooked no compromise. During his initial term, 18 homicide cases found their way onto his docket, resulting in 15 individuals meeting the gallows. Throughout his tenure, an astonishing 160 individuals faced the ultimate punishment, with 79 of them ultimately meeting their fate on the scaffold. Parker's verdicts were swift and often bypassed the intricate due process common in the Eastern judicial system. Critics decried his methods as excessive, painting Parker as a proponent of violence, thirsty for blood. Nevertheless, there existed a faction that believed his stern measures were necessary to quell the lawlessness of the frontier. To them, Parker represented an unwavering figure crucial for taming chaos and preserving order. 
He himself justified his actions as indispensable deterrents in a landscape overrun by lawlessness, often asserting that he was a tool of the law rather than an agent of death. His unapologetic stance and the atmosphere of his courtroom, where sentences were delivered without clemency, encapsulated the spirit of the lawless frontier. Judge Parker, known as the Hanging Judge, embodied the severe, unyielding response to lawlessness, leaving an enduring mark on the history of the American West. Number 17. Whispers from the Sepia Portal In the expansive landscape of the Wild West, a mysterious photographer embarked on an intriguing journey that would forever redefine the boundaries of both photography and fate. What made these photographs truly exceptional was their remarkable revelation upon development. These sepia-toned images, suffused with an otherworldly quality, portrayed more than mere frozen moments in time. Instead, they offered tantalizing glimpses into the future of their subjects, akin to an uncanny portal into the unknown. Cattle-driving cowboys appeared as prosperous ranch owners in these photographs, while those caught in tense shootouts were unveiled as peaceful settlers in years yet to come. Word of the spectral photographer's work spread rapidly, captivating and disconcerting the residents of the Wild West in equal measure. Many saw these images as a celestial interference, a mystical reminder that destiny was an inescapable force. As these photographs circulated, a blend of fascination and apprehension enveloped the cowboys, fundamentally reshaping their perspective on life's uncertainties. These images not only captured the spirit of the era, but also the very essence of destiny itself, leading to contemplation about the blurred line between reality and the supernatural. They left behind a haunting question. Can one truly catch a glimpse of what lies beyond the horizon? Number 16 the legendary African-American cowboy of the Wild West. While popular culture often associates cowboys with Hollywood stars like Clint Eastwood, James Dean, and John Wayne, the reality of real-life cowboys is far more intriguing and diverse. Contrary to the Hollywood focus on gunfights, a substantial number of cowboys served as both lawmen and outlaws. When American ranchers settled in Texas, they brought enslaved individuals with them, who later played a pivotal role in managing herds. After the abolition of slavery, these skilled cowhands emerged as liberated workers, their contributions vital to the expansion of the cowboy legacy. One remarkable African-American cowboy was Bass Reeves, whose fame as the first U.S. Deputy Marshal west of the Mississippi River is noteworthy. His three-decade-long career saw the arrest of over 3,000 criminals, highlighting the often untold stories of black cowboys who achieved remarkable feats. Beyond the past, contemporary cowboys are found in various fields related to horses, cattle ranching, and even pig farming. The cowboy identity encompasses a rich history that extends far beyond the limited Hollywood portrayals, a history that deserves acknowledgement and celebration. The Old Wild West was a place of not only daring gunfights and showdowns, but also of diverse individuals whose stories have been overshadowed. The true cowboy narrative encompasses a tread of cultures, races, and roles that challenge the Hollywood archetype, making it an integral part of the unique history of the Wild Wild West. Number 15. The Gold Rush the California Gold Rush of the mid-1800s stands as a crucial moment in American history, marked by its profound economic consequences and far-reaching societal changes. The significant influx of prospectors, commonly known as 49ers, triggered the rapid emergence of boomtowns, swiftly developing settlements that sprang up in the most unexpected locations. Initially a modest settlement, this city soon evolved into a bustling hub of activity and opportunity, serving as a critical departure point for prospectors and a vital supply center for burgeoning mining operations. The demographic landscape of California underwent a profound transformation as people from diverse cultures, backgrounds, and nationalities converged in pursuit of wealth. This multicultural convergence cultivated a highly diverse and cosmopolitan society, resulting in a unique fusion of traditions, languages, and perspectives. The lawlessness often associated with boom towns and mining camps presented distinct challenges, necessitating the establishment of new legal systems and governance structures to maintain order and resolve disputes. 
Moreover, the societal fabric adapted to these changing dynamics, with women assuming roles that extended beyond their traditional spheres, contributing to schools, businesses, and social organizations that played pivotal roles in shaping the emerging communities. Number 14. The Great Texas Train Robbery, 1904. The Great Texas Train Robbery remains a captivating episode in the history of the Wild West, marked by daring criminals, audacious thefts, and unforeseen twists. At its core, this robbery involved a clever gang of outlaws who meticulously schemed to derail a train with the aim of pilfering a rumored substantial sum of money supposedly on board. These outlaws, skilled in disguise and deception, embodied the romanticized image of bandits prevalent in Western legend. The climax of this heist unfolded as the gang flawlessly executed their plan, causing the train to derail amidst a hail of gunfire and dramatic events. However, a surprising revelation added an ironic twist to the tale. The money was not where they had anticipated. The supposed fortune turned out to be a closely guarded secret, concealed in a clever manner that confounded the thieves. This unexpected turn of events adds an extra layer of intrigue to the narrative rendering the robbers' meticulous planning ultimately futile. Number 13. Ghost Towns and Their Unexpected Origins Ghost towns, characterized by their deteriorating structures, empty streets, and a haunting sense of abandonment, possess a deep fascination rooted in their unexpected origins. These eerie remnants, frozen in history, embody the echoes of once vibrant lives filled with dreams and uncertainties. What's truly intriguing is the swiftness with which they emerged and faded away, a paradox that defines their historical narrative. These towns often sprang to life at the mere mention of valuable minerals or the potential for a strategic railroad connection. This promise attracted throngs of fortune seekers, transforming makeshift tent cities overnight into bustling settlements, complete with saloons and hotels, embodying the quintessential American frontier spirit. However, the same factors that fueled their growth frequently led to their demise. Once the riches were exhausted or proved elusive, the motivation to stay dwindled. The capricious nature of the railroad industry also played a role, leaving towns abandoned when tracks were redirected elsewhere. While some succumbed to economic shifts, others fell victim to the unforgiving forces of nature, deceit, or simply misfortune. Collectively, these towns weave a vibrant tapestry of life in the unpredictable Wild West, a tableau of courage and recklessness, hopes and setbacks. Number 12. Gunfight at the O.K. Corral, 1881. The gunfight at the O.K. Corral occurred on October 26, 1881, in Tombstone, Arizona. This confrontation saw the Earp brothers, Wyatt, Virgil, Morgan, along with the dentist-turned-gunslinger Doc Holliday, facing off against a faction of outlaws known as the Cowboys. This intense showdown, lasting a mere 30 seconds, left an indelible mark on history, serving as a vivid representation of the lawlessness and chaos of the era. At the heart of the conflict was a feud between the Earps, who were striving to establish law and order and the Cowboys, a loosely affiliated group of cattle rustlers and criminals. Tensions had been escalating as both sides vied for power, control over territory, and sought retribution for past grievances. The stage was thus set for the fateful encounter at the OK Corral. In a rapid flurry of gunfire, the confrontation erupted, with bullets flying in the dusty thoroughfare. When the smoke cleared, three Cowboys lay dead, and Virgil and Morgan Earp, along with Doc Holliday, had sustained injuries. Although the gunfight itself was brief, its resonance echoed through history. The gunfight at the OK Corral has endured as a symbol of the Wild West's violent and tumultuous character, exemplifying the unbridled conflict and the fine line between those upholding the law and those breaking it. Over time, the events of that day have been romanticized and distorted, weaving their way into folklore and popular culture. Books, films, and television shows have continued to recount and embellish this tale, immortalizing the participants as legendary figures. Number 11. Dentistry on Horseback In the American Wild West, access to medical care was considered a luxury due to the scattered nature of settlements across the rugged landscape. 
However, a remarkable phenomenon known as dentistry on horseback emerged in response to this challenge. This practice was necessitated by the scarcity of healthcare professionals, as doctors and dentists were a rare sight due to the vast distances and lack of infrastructure. Without formal training, these mobile tooth extraction specialists embarked on daring journeys equipped with pliers, a vial of pain-numbing whiskey, and an extraordinary amount of courage. They would establish makeshift dental offices in locations such as saloons, market squares, and other communal spaces where they could attract a crowd. Their primary service was tooth extraction, a crucial need in a time when dental hygiene was subpar and diets high in sugary foods, including candies and soda, wreaked havoc on people's teeth. While some of these itinerant dentists genuinely aimed to provide a much-needed service, others were mere charlatans who staged extravagant tooth extractions to entice more customers. The limited alternatives available compelled many frontier dwellers to turn to these traveling practitioners in their moments of dental desperation. These roving tooth pullers embodied both resilience and adaptability, offering a glimpse into how people coped with adversity in the Wild West. As they navigated the challenges of remote living, resource scarcity, and the urgent need for dental care, these individuals became an enduring part of the Wild West's history, showcasing the unconventional solutions that arose in response to unique circumstances. Number 10. Two Graves for One Man Jesse James, a name deeply associated with the Wild West, embodied both the idealized and feared aspects of that era. Despite his notorious reputation for audacious bank robberies, James found himself in an unusual situation after his retirement. The once feared outlaw settled in the tranquil town of Kearney, Missouri, with the hope of distancing himself from his criminal past. Tragedy struck when Jesse James met his demise, falling victim to an assassin's bullet. To protect his remains from the threat of grave robbers, his family made the unconventional choice to lay him to rest in their own front yard. As time passed and the persistent threats from his enemies diminished, the family decided that a more traditional burial was appropriate. They arranged for a proper interment at Kearney Cemetery, a gesture aimed at reconciling the man with his controversial history. This enigmatic story took a further twist when an elderly man named J. Frank Dalton at the remarkable age of 101, claimed in 1948 that he was the real Jesse James. The motives behind Dalton's assertion have remained a subject of speculation. Was it a final bid for recognition or an elaborate hoax? Modern technology in the form of DNA testing eventually provided clarity. Scientific evidence confirmed that the genuine Jesse James was indeed laid to rest in Mount Olivet Cemetery in Kearney. The saga of Jesse James, a figure larger than life itself, was so complex that even in death, his presence demanded more than one resting place. Number 9. The Gettysburg of the West The Gettysburg of the West is a lesser-known yet historically significant conflict during the American Civil War which pitted Confederate General Henry Hopkins Sibley against Union General Samuel Curtis. Sibley's objective was to alleviate pressure on Confederate forces in the East while undermining Northern unity. His plan involved invading the New Mexico Territory and subsequently advancing through Colorado. However, Curtis, leading Union forces, became aware of Sibley's intentions and rapidly organized a response. As Sibley's troops moved south, the Union's 1st Regiment of Volunteers in Colorado promptly positioned themselves to obstruct his advance. They were joined by local ranchers and experienced guides, enabling them to effectively outmaneuver the Confederate forces, resulting in the destruction of their supply train. This engagement extended into a multi-day battle, often referred to as the Gettysburg of the West. The pivotal Battle of Westport ensued, during which Union forces established a defensive line along the Blue River to impede the Confederate progress. This clash inflicted substantial casualties on both sides, with the smaller Confederate army bearing the brunt of the losses. Sibley's retreat persisted as Union forces pursued, culminating in the Battle of Mine Creek, one of the largest mounted cavalry battles of the entire war, which further weakened the Confederate forces. Facing an outnumbered and strategically disadvantaged position with roughly 6,000 soldiers, 
Price's defeated Confederate army had no choice but to retreat to Texas, never returning to the region. Number eight, tasting the lawless liquor of the Wild West. In a rustic Wild West saloon, you take on the role of a confident cowboy perched on a worn bar stool. You request the finest whiskey from the bartender, eagerly anticipating a satisfying sip. However, your excitement turns to disappointment as the drink tastes like fiery gasoline, despite being aged for a decade and claiming roots in Kentucky. This oddity stems from the lawlessness of the era, with little copyright enforcement and accountability in the frontier. Many whiskey traders engaged in shady practices, diluting the spirits or mixing them with cheaper alternatives for profit. The whiskey names reflected this eccentricity. For instance, Coffin Varnish hardly inspired confidence, and Mountain Howitzer sounded more like cannon fire than refined drinks. Then there's Tangle Leg, a humorous term for potent brews that could leave you stumbling as you left the saloon. These names highlight the intensity of these spirits. In an era where norms were disregarded and adventure was sought after with zeal, the people of that time certainly left an enduring mark on history. Number 7. The Saga of America's War Camels In 1885, during the ongoing construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis initiated a unique project involving wild camels in the Texas Plains. Recognizing their military potential, Davis persuaded Congress to allocate $30,000 for importing camels from the Mediterranean and the Middle East. The goal was to use these camels to transport vital supplies to remote outposts in the American West. Seventy-five camels were stationed at Camp Verde, Texas. In 1860, two expeditions, harnessing the camels' unique abilities, explored uncharted routes along the Mexican border. However, the domestic mule industry, fearing competition, led Congress to reject further camel acquisitions. The Civil War complicated matters as Texas seceded from the Union, and Confederate forces took control of Camp Verde, including its camels. During the Civil War, the fate of these camels changed unexpectedly. Some roamed freely, while a few were captured by Union forces and auctioned in Iowa in 1863. The remaining camels were used by the Confederate Post Office Department, with a few eventually ending up in Mexico. Number six, the unforgettable train wreck of 1890s Texas. In the 1890s, Texas faced a lack of recreational activities. While farmers had gatherings and women sought comfort in the Christian Temperance Union, there was a notable absence of engaging pastimes. Then emerged William Crush, a railway agent with an audacious idea that would seize the public's attention. His notion? to orchestrate a dramatic collision between two trains for entertainment. Against the odds, Crush secured approval from higher-ups at the Katy Railway. He meticulously prepared a temporary town named the City of Crush, and on September 15th, thousands of spectators gathered to witness this unconventional spectacle. By 10 a.m., the crowd swelled to 10,000, reflecting a diverse mix of backgrounds. Initially scheduled for 4 p.m., the collision was delayed due to the constant arrival of trains. The anticipation peaked as Crush himself arrived on a white horse, signaling the start of the daring display. The collision unfolded between the two trains hurtling toward each other at 50 miles per hour, creating a breathtaking spectacle. However, the awe-inspiring moment swiftly turned to chaos. Despite the pandemonium, spectators rushed forward to collect souvenirs from the wreckage. Despite the disaster, the event unintentionally garnered significant attention. Crush was fired but then rehired when Katy Railroad recognized the enormous publicity it had generated. The event's unexpected success led to international press coverage, instantly propelling Katy Railroad to fame. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Now it's time for today's topic. In the Wild West, there was an unusual aspect of gender dynamics known as the petticoat duel. These duels, often called skirt duels or lady duels, emerged as a unique form of conflict resolution between women in the late 19th century. Rather than resorting to violence or male proxies for their disputes, women settled differences through duels. Typically non-lethal, these duels featured weapons like broomsticks or horsewhips and were staged theatrically in public spaces, with spectators present. 
The women donned their finest attire, often with voluminous petticoats for protection. This practice provided a platform for women to assert themselves in a male-dominated society, reflecting their resilience in a challenging era. Petticoat duels were more about saving face than causing harm, highlighting how women navigated societal expectations in a frontier environment where gender roles were rigidly defined. Let us know what you think about what we just showed you. Number 5. The Shootist Duel The duel famously known as the Shootist Showdown between Wild Bill Hickok and Davis Tutt is an enduring symbol of the bold and lethal encounters that defined the Wild West. In the year 1865, this iconic face-off unfolded in Springfield, Missouri, showcasing the art of the rapid draw, a quintessential skill of that era. Hickok, a legendary gunslinger renowned for his precision, confronted Tut, a gambler and rival, over gambling debts and personal conflicts. With both men poised across from each other, they drew their weapons with astonishing speed. Tut fired first, but his shot missed its mark, while Hickox found its target, fatally wounding Tut. This duel's swiftness and outcome emphasized the deadly nature of such confrontations. Beyond its immediate context, this duel embodies the concept of frontier justice and individualism, where personal disputes often found resolution through high-stakes, high-noon showdowns. The shootist duel endures as an enduring emblem of the Wild West's rugged ethos, epitomizing the fusion of skill, danger, and audacity that characterized that era. In a remarkable display of skill, Wild Bill Hickok and Davis Tutt engaged in a quick-draw duel in 1865, recognized as one of the earliest instances of a genuine quick-draw gunfight. Number 4. $46 Man In 1911, a man named McCurdy made a pivotal choice that led him down a criminal path. His aim was to rob a train with hopes of striking it rich in gold. However, his scheme took an unexpected turn when he realized the train was packed with passengers, yielding a mere $46. Despite his criminal aspirations, McCurdy's ambitions were tragically cut short when he was fatally shot during the heist. What ensued were a series of bizarre events that propelled McCurdy's story to unparalleled heights. His body was preserved by an undertaker and eventually ended up in a traveling carnival where it became a peculiar attraction. For six decades, his mummified remains toured haunted houses and wax museums, each proprietor capitalizing on the eerie tale of the man who sought wealth but found infamy in death. The astonishing narrative took an unforeseen twist in 1976 during the filming of the popular TV show The Six Million Dollar Man. McCurdy's legacy resurfaced, quite literally. A finger of the mummy inadvertently broke off, revealing that this carnival curiosity was, in fact, an authentic mummified corpse. The crew, expecting fictional drama, stumbled upon the real-life enigma of the $46 man. Number 3. The Culture of Violence The culture of violence in the American West has been a topic of controversy. While popular portrayals often depict the Old West as a hotbed of constant shootouts and lawlessness. Contrary to the exaggerated image, murder was not an everyday occurrence in most small towns. When compared to modern standards and the rest of the United States in the 19th century, excluding certain regions affected by the Civil War and Reconstruction, the western frontier did exhibit alarmingly high homicide rates. Dodge City, Kansas serves as an illustrative case study. The recorded annual homicide rate in Dodge City was 165 adults killed per 100,000 people. This statistic translates to a staggering one in 61 chances of being murdered if one lived in Dodge City between 1876 and 1885. Comparing these figures to contemporary standards offers perspective. In the year 2021, Tijuana, Mexico, had a homicide rate of 138 adults killed per 100,000 people, making Dodge City's violent reputation evident. However, it's important to acknowledge that Dodge City's relatively small population can distort statistics. A few isolated murders could significantly inflate the murder rate. For instance, in 1880, only one person out of 996 was murdered. Number 2. Chinese Laborers and the Building of the West In the narrative of the American West's transformation, 
It's essential to recognize that the central figures aren't limited to the famed gunslingers, ranchers, and gold prospectors often celebrated in popular culture. Chinese laborers, frequently overlooked in mainstream history, played a pivotal role in shaping the West. Many Chinese immigrants were drawn by the promise of the Gold Mountain during the Gold Rush era. However, they faced not only the grueling challenges of mining, but also pervasive discrimination that severely restricted their opportunities. The influence of Chinese laborers extended well beyond the mines. The construction of the Transcontinental Railroad between 1865 and 1869 is a significant testament to their contributions. Over 12,000 Chinese workers toiled tirelessly, laying tracks, overcoming formidable mountains, and enduring perilous conditions. Beyond this remarkable feat, Chinese immigrants established vibrant communities that enriched the American frontier with new cuisines, customs, and traditions. Iconic enclaves like San Francisco's Chinatown stand as living monuments to their enduring influence and resilience. However, the story of Chinese laborers is not without its hardships. Systemic racism was pervasive, epitomized by the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, a legislative expression of prejudice that severely limited Chinese immigration. Violence and forced evictions were not uncommon, painting a complex and often tragic picture of their experience. Number 1. Pioneering Women In Wild West narratives, the spotlight often shines on the rugged masculinity of cowboys and outlaws, leaving women's significant contributions in the shadows. These women defied traditional roles as damsels or saloon entertainers, exemplified by figures like Calamity Jane and Annie Oakley, who challenged gender norms with their sharpshooting skills. Behind the scenes, women ran essential businesses like boarding houses and laundries, contributing to local economies. They also held roles as educators, journalists, and landowners, enriching the region's culture and intellect. Indigenous women like Sacagawea played crucial roles as interpreters and guides, bridging cultural gaps during a time of rapid change. Despite the hardships of frontier life, women displayed remarkable resilience. These stories provide a necessary counterpoint to the male-centric Wild West tales. Women were not passive observers. They actively shaped the West as pioneers, entrepreneurs, and trailblazers. Their courage, determination, and diverse contributions are integral to the Wild West's history. Which of these events piqued your curiosity? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.